Huh? Two of them. Congratulations, you can count. And they say the school system's failing. So it's just like the the famous, like it is just New York University or University. What, what's the uh, what's the name of the university in New York? NYU. NYU. Yeah, yeah NYU. Yeah, so New York. You, you got it right. New York University. That's what NYU yeah. stands for. <laughs> I just never. I've never called it New York University. I've always said NYU. Yeah, exactly. Um, I do too. Uh, so Peter and Deborah, I, I applied for there and I did not get in at all. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Well, you're a comic book artist now, so well done. Yeah, that's right. Fuck NYU. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter and Deborah discuss the footprint whilst uh, they see we see Eddie Brock sneaking around. So Eddie Brock is not taking no for an answer, and he's thinking this Kurt Connors guy is definitely something to do with this giant lizard. Why? Don't know, but he's obsessed with Connors. Well, I would assume. Is it, is it public knowledge that Kurt Connors is experimenting on lizards for limb uh, regeneration? Nope, not at all. Oh, so this is all just it's still in the lab, not like out, like public knowledge yet? Yep, absolutely. Wow, well, Ed, Eddie Brock is on the case. <laughs> and then finally, we're suddenly introduced to Spider-Sense, which every time I read a comic book or think of Spider-Sense, that noise it makes, that sort of neo-flash behind Spider-Man as his face splits in half, is just the coolest Spider-Sense. That neo-flash, that's only from that... I've never seen it anywhere else besides uh, that show, that neon look, where it just it, it's essentially just uh, inverts the image, doesn't it? It does, yeah. 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 I, I, you know what? Next time I draw Spider-Sense, I'm going to do that. You should, man. I hope you do, because that is my spider sense. That is just so well done. I love the noise. Uh, it almost sounds like someone trying to create music with their fingers on like a type of glass or on the top of their glasses or something. It's just like a really weird like noise. I can't, I can't do it, but I'm trying to. A mini trumpet. Yeah, and just the flashing lights and his glowing eyes, it just immediately makes me feel like there's something dangerous up ahead. You know, it just what? feels... Feels like danger, so it's a really cool spider sense. Um, so Peter and Deborah discovered a shadowed Connors in the room who warns them to stay away as he has just transformed into the lizard. So they open the door and there's this big hulking creature in the shadows and he's like, get away! Now who came first? I would assume the lizard came before man back. I think you were going to say the lizard or the egg. No, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing lame puns like you. Is it, is it, is it, um... The lizard or man bat that came first? Because they're essentially the same character. Oh, interesting. And also, uh, first episodes of each animated series. Is the oh my god, you're right. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. Whoa, that is weird. So yeah. they, I wonder if they chose that specifically because they're like, this worked, so let's do that. Maybe. I mean, it. So first of all, Batman the animated series was on the same channel. It was on Fox Kids as Spider Man. Um, Spider-Man would play earlier time slot and Batman would take play in a later time slot, which is why Batman got away with more um, than Spider-Man did. Also, the reason, um, we'll go into it a bit more, but the reason there was so much censorship put on this is because uh, it was modelled after shows like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, as they're known in, in England. Um, which is ridiculous. Which is so weird, it just doesn't flow off the tongue. And then also the Transformers. They were designed not only to sell toys, those shows, which is what they wanted out of this, but also because of those restrictions that Ninja Turtles um, and also Transformers had, they put the same restrictions on Spider-Man because they thought, well, that formula's working, so it's bound to work with Spider-Man. Right. So, uh, who knows the correlation between the the first episode of Batman and the first episode of Spider-Man, but definitely a, a lot to review there with two creatures that were originally scientists and now are horrible living monsters. Yeah, very similar. So, um, the lizard uh, then starts to, like mess about in the room, um, he knocks Deborah over, or he knocks like a big uh, bookcase over, and the lizard then uh, escapes with a device in his hand. Peter jumps into the window frame, he crouches as Spider-Man, he pulls up his shirt, you can see the Spider-Man costume under his shirt, and it just looks so cool, the way he's crouched in the window frame, uh, which once again was open because there was no breaking glass, so no breaking glass in this episode. Uh, and he's just about to pull his, his costume, well, he's just about to pull his shirt off to reveal the costume, 
And then Deborah goes, help me, Peter, help me. And he has to leave the lizard bee uh, to escape. Right. So then Peter uh, starts to basically tell us. So he's having a, a narration and we get a flashback on how he knows Connors and also how he could possibly be related to this lizard creature. He doesn't suspect that Kirk Connors is a lizard. He just thinks that Kirk Connors has something to do with this giant lizard creature. I think he thinks that the lizards they were experimenting on turned into this giant lizard. Well, good guess. So, yeah, this flashback shows um, mice being experimented on with lizard DNA and the Neogenic Recombinator. So this is the first time that's introduced. Neogenics is first introduced into the show, which obviously plays a big part in the show. Um, and as Stanley always used to say, make something imaginary sound so scientific and intelligent it will sound real and no one will question it. Mm, yeah, good point. So we see the mouse grow back its limb, uh, Connors is missing an arm, the puzzle pieces start to fall into place, except for Peter, who is there and is still baffled on why someone would kidnap Connors. So he thinks that the lizard has kidnapped Kirk Connors. For some oh, reason. Oh, really? Yeah. So Lizard emerges from the sewers and runs through his neighbourhood in the rain, heading for his home. The lizard's noises, I think, sound like someone snoring very loudly... Which you the know, sisters of snow. which you know all about, uh, mixed with the lion. If you listen to it again, it sounds like someone snoring and a lion's roar kind of blended into one. Uh, this is this is pre Jurassic Park as well, isn't it? Ninety four. Yeah, when did Jurassic Park? Come I out? think I think Jurassic Park came out in ninety five. Let me just look it up. I think you're right. No, I think you're right. Because no. Jurassic Park revolutionised uh, sound design of blending many different animals to create the infamous or not infamous, the famous um t-rex roar so and after that film everybody just copied that style for any roars or anything that it was just a blend of i forgot about i did a whole paper on it at university about the blend of uh hippos and lions and and even like a giraffe as well and uh oh wait hang on 1993 oh okay so so there you go that's you probably go. why they did that sound there you go uh so then we see the lizard watching his family in the window, uh, which is kind of creepy, but he's just kind of watching his his son and his wife. Uh, and suddenly Spider-Man appears in Kurt Connor's home, and he's asking the family where Kurt is. Uh, then we see Eddie Brock, and suddenly he's ambushed outside by the lizard. So he's been trailing, I guess at this point, he was trailing Peter, then he saw the lizard, and he must have somehow managed to, I don't know, because the lizard came out of the sewers, so I don't know how he managed to trace the lizard there, unless he's thinking Kirk Connors still has something to do with this, I guess, has gone to the family home uh, to spy on them. So Spider-Man hears uh, the lizard and hears Eddie Brock's scream, so he confronts the lizard and he starts to take pictures of the lizard as he's hopping about and getting attacked. And this is where one of the greatest puns I've heard Spider-Man give Really? I love it so much because it's so bad. Um, he says, Spider-Man, well, I thought the lizard was a myth. And then he dodges an attack and he goes, maybe I was myth-taken. No, he didn't. He does. <laughs> oh, God. I think he's been taking notes from you, mate. <laughs> myth-taken notes. Um, so, Spidey drops the camera in the water and, of course, the pictures are ruined, which there goes his reward. Um... He also says some funny lines as he's dodging attacks like, good reflexes for a handbag, which is kind of funny. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, Lizard yanks Spider-Man down from the walls from his web and throws into a massive treehouse. Um, I always wondered why there was a treehouse in the communal garden, because it's a, it's a garden in the middle of a series of apartments. It's not like someone's own private garden, so there's this right. treehouse. Oh, that's awesome. So all the kids can share the treehouse. That's pretty cool. I bet all the kids fight over whose treehouse that is. Probably, yeah. They definitely do. 
Yeah, that's a good point, actually. That's exactly what it was there. Yeah, that's there's, right, there. there's a whole different television show inside that television show, the horrors of children being cunts to each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'd watch that show. So, Lizard then escapes uh, soon after his son comes out and yells, No, Daddy, stop! Uh, and then he suddenly snaps to being Kurt Connors for a bit and realises what he's doing, and he runs off as the lizard down into the sewers. Um, so Spider-Man discovers from that line that Lizard is also Kurt Connors, which is no fucking shit, mate. Well, we, yeah, we obviously know that because we've been watching the whole... Yeah, but like day. I said, you had this flashback of Kurt Connors experimenting on mice for Peter Parker and saying, like, with this, we can grow back limbs like my arm. And you're just like, okay, well, you're using lizard DNA. Yeah, but mice. he's... Peter Parker, he's no Eddie Brock, you know. He can't solve crimes in an instant. That's true. He's only the Watson to Eddie Brock's Sherlock Holmes. That's right. No, he's, he's the bloody uh, dog. <laughs> uh, so Brock is listening on this whole conversation as Margaret Connors explaining to Spider-Man how Connors came to be the lizard. As uh, she's explaining, Brock's taking all these notes, Spider-Man discovers him, and he webs him onto a lamppost, and also webs his mouth shut as well. So, basically, I know that you're going to ruin this family's life, so I'm going to web you up into this lamppost, web your mouth shut, it will disintegrate in, what, like three hours or something, like his web takes to disintegrate, which uh, leaves Eddie Brock from going to the Daily Bugle and spilling the beans. And establishing his hate for Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. Right off the bat, that's right. Immediately, we've got a little insight. I, just, into... I had no idea like that Eddie Brock's foundation was built in episode one. And I wonder if that's because it came out in 94, which is uh, three years after the... I think... No, no, it must be... Maybe it came out in 1990 or 89. He was super popular at that time. Like Even, even after Todd left and he was doing Image, like... Venom was a big seller, and Carnage as well. They were huge sellers for Marvel Comics. He had his own book that started at that time that sold better than some regular title books like Captain America and Iron Man, all this stuff. Like, he outsold all of those. So I wonder if they established him, this character, in Episode 1 because they just knew how popular the character actually was. Yeah, and also they get to tell that story over a few episodes as well. So when he does become Venom, you're like, oh my god, I didn't think that, you know, Eddie Brock, who obviously doesn't like Spider-Man, is actually going to become one of his greatest villains ever. Yeah, that's like that's like if there was a new Batman show now, they would they would just start establishing the quarter hours in episode one, because that's how new he was in that time period. Isn't that nuts? That's true. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Which they tried to do on Gotham, and I didn't think they did a good job with it at all. I, I stopped watching that piece of crap a long time ago. <laughs> so... Uh, as Spider-Man is dealing with Eddie Brock, he hears another scream, and he comes back to Kirk Connors' uh, apartment complex, and Margaret Connors is missing, and it was just the little boy left, Billy, as, as Lizard would say, Billy, <laughs> uh, which is really creepy. Uh, sounds like some sort of redneck killer or something. He's like, Billy. Uh, so Margaret Connors is kidnapped by the Lizard and taken down into the sewers. So Spider-Man says to the kid he will take him to a neighbor's house and then find his parents. So imagine being at a neighbor's house and opening the door to Spider-Man with the kid and then being told the situation. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hi, this is Billy Connors, Billy Connors your neighbor, and um, I'm Spider-Man. Yep, nice to meet you. Uh, can he stay with you because his dad is a giant lizard and he kidnapped his mum and now he's gone down the sewers and I've got to chase him. Uh, make sure Billy's in bed by nine. Thanks very much. Bye. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure, this type of thing happens all the time. <laughs> Come on in, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> At least Gilbert Lee's not there. Um... <laughs> Is that Billy? <laughs> I saw your dad, who I created back in 1963. <laughs> Uh, so then Spider-Man's in the sewers, and this is where it gets really great for fans. He's crawling around the sewers... Uh, and suddenly he wishes he could be one of the galaxy hopping superheroes instead. Um, yeah, they, I remember all these. Yeah, it was cool. So, or heroes that don't go into the sewers like. So, by the way, let's go back before I go into that. Galaxy hopping superheroes instead. Do you think that they would even 
I don't even know actually. When they must have. When did, when was Guardians of the Galaxy created? The, they're not the, referencing that. I'm sure they're referencing something like Secret Wars, where they're all sent to different galaxies. That's true. Yeah, they probably are. Um, and then he said, "All heroes that don't go into the sewers, like but, the Fantastic e- Four." Even though they reference that, it is funny because don't they do Secret Wars later on? They do. Yeah, they do Secret Wars later on. Um, but sorry, I'm just going to go back. So the heroes that, get, that don't go down into the sewers are heroes like the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, or the Defenders. Well, maybe not the Hulk. So Well, that's because the, de- the Defenders at that point is a completely different team than the one we know on TV. The Defenders was like Hercules and Hulk and stuff like that, wasn't it? I know, but just hearing all of those teams, the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, or the Defenders, well, maybe not the Hulk. So... So many names right there where you go, oh my god, this exists. I remember, as much as I hate this film with a passion, when I saw Batman and Robin, and George Clooney as Batman says to Robin, this is why Superman works alone, I still got quite excited where I'm like, oh yeah. my god, Superman exists, and Batman just said his name. Oh, it's not, it's, it's not bad. It's fun. Well, it's pretty bad. It's uh, as good as, like, the 66... 66- um, no, no, it's not. Stop talking right now. It's not even right. close. It tries to be 66, but like a weird Joel Schumacher version, which is just really odd. It's nostalgic. If you put it on, you'd be quoting it and laughing and having a good time. I need lots of booze, but maybe. Um, so just once again, setting that that universe where you go, oh my God, these people exist in this universe and Spidey's referencing them. So we get great scenes of Spidey crawling and hopping through the sewers as he narrates his fears and his connection to Connors, establishing a story where Spider-Man always finds himself in a predicament where people from Parker's life have crossed over into Spider-Man's life, which is just so Spider-Man. You've got that moment where he goes, oh my god, the people that I care about and love in Peter Parker's life have now become an enemy of Spider-Man. I think that's just a consistent theme of Spider-Man. Yep. So, Spidey then references for the first time changing his web cartridges, cartridges, um, uh, as he's running low. So, it's just nice to know that, obviously, he's got web shooters and cartridges, and it's not something like Tobey Maguire, where he's, like, spewing out this little hole. Well, this is, all, this is all before that, isn't it? So. Yeah, I know, but it's just weird that they did that. Um, then Spider-Man, of course, the other type of Spider-Man that we always see is where he blames himself. He blames himself for helping Connors, uh, creating the lizard. He blames himself for helping all of the experiments. So that's just another real Spidey trope that we always see. And then suddenly Spider-Man's interrupted by the subway worker, the fat guy that went missing at the beginning. Um, He gets info on why he was kept alive. So he was kept alive because he was helping the lizard with setting up some sort of uh, system. And then he got too weak. Because uh, he didn't eat. So imagine just being like dragged down the sewers by a lizard. And then the lizard is telling you, all right, do this, do this, do this for days. And you barely, you haven't eaten anything. You probably... Yeah, like, can, I, can I get a slice from like a pizza place please, or something? Like, come on. <laughs> oh, he's probably been drinking poo water or something. It's just really uh, mad. Um, he's like, and I'm still fat. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> So then we get the typical bad guy reveal of here's my evil plan, which he's revealing to his wife. He wants to turn everyone in New York into genetically mutated lizards. Uh, That way, the Amazing Spider-Man film. That's exactly the film. You're right. Uh, That way, they'll no longer have weaknesses or experience the loss of limbs or injury. Uh, He plans to do it through the electrical power lines of the city by using the Neogenic (laughs) Recombinator. Uh, just at that, we get the awesome Spider-Man theme as he swings down, drop kicks the lizard, knocking the device from his hands, which is even used in the intro. Uh, you see that scene. Well, I'm not surprised. I, I, I wonder how many episodes they had animated before they could chuck stuff together for the intro. Yeah, it's true. And also the same uh, scene, but another piece of it is where the lizard then whips his tail at Spider-Man who dodges it and it cracks the concrete into a bunch of pieces. That's in the intro as well. Um Once again, Spider-Man moves quickly and with fantastic agility, showing us for the first time how he moves and poses. It's just great to see him hopping around as the lizard's chasing him, and it just, it feels really lively and just exciting watching that scene. Um, Not like any other cartoon where it's just Spider-Man jumping from wall to wall like a static man on his arms and knees. It's really weird. And 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 no punches have been thrown? 
No punches have been thrown, man. I double checked. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it, w- it was very good action for a cartoon. I mean, uh, Batman the Animated Series, I wouldn't even consider that like a great action cartoon. It was more about drama and, and investigation. And all of the other Marvel cartoons were just chucked together, I feel like. The, the Hulk one, the Iron Man one, Fantastic Four, they're hot garbage. Except yeah, they weren't, they weren't great. Marvel. Yeah, and you know what's amazing is that they all, besides the Hulk, who was on a different channel, they all got to feature in this show, but Spider-Man was off limits to the other showrunners. He was never allowed to appear in any of the shows. Spider-Man oh. was... Well, the main reason for that is that this show was run by Marvel Film and TV Studios, I think it was called, which is run by A.B. Arad and Stan Lee, where all the other yeah. shows were like different companies owned by Fox. So this show was like off limits to anybody wanting to take... Christopher Daniel Barnes, Spider-Man, and put him in another show. Interesting. Uh, so, Lizard hurts his wife in the scuffle, and Spidey and Lizard fall into the water as they wrestle over the recombinator, which is in Lizard's hands. Uh, then we get some great narration from Spider-Man once again, which is giving his thoughts on, thoughts on his relationship with Connors the Lizard. Um, he was saying, like, interesting, you know, a few weeks ago, this was a scientist, a man I admired, and now I, you know, he's a creature that has barely any brain capacity and is trying to kill me it's just great for him once again to go for everybody watching here's how i'm thinking and this is the situation it's just great yeah to and, and it's not cheesy or anything it's quite good insight yeah and then the recombinator goes off under the water and ignites both the lizard and spider-man this is what comes into play in season two much later with spider-man being exposed to the recombinator once again, not bitten by a spider that was exposed to it, but fully exposed to its neogenic rays. Um, that's what yeah. causes him, obviously, to become, to accelerate his spiderness inside of him and become the man spider. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, it's great, like, for a cartoon to set up stuff like that might happen if they even get another season. That's nuts. Yeah, that is nuts. Unless, unless, unless they, it just happened in the episode and they rewatched it and they were like, oh, we could do something here with this. That's, no, that's true. Yeah, they could have. Well. They could have gone back and be like, "Hey, this works." Yeah, we're, we're like, we're like sucking their dicks. Like, oh yeah, you guys are amazing for setting up the story. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we're the best. <laughs> so then we got Spider Man emerging after the explosion, brings out Connors, who is now normal again, out of the water. Um, during the fight, he caught pictures of the lizard, which he uh, would obviously bring to JJ for the war. He. Uh, webbed a camera onto the wall before swinging down and fighting the lizard, so that's cool. Win-win for Spidey. Uh, I mean, I don't think that camera he had had autofocus, but all right. I guess, yeah. Um, but anyway, he must have gotten one good one. So then we are cut. We cut to Brock bringing JJ to Connor's house to prove he is the lizard. Uh, obviously, JJ doesn't believe him. Uh, he said that. Parker's already cashed in on the reward, and Brock's like, forget the pictures, I'm going to show you the actual lizard. Like, if, I, if I'm if i wrong, I'll eat the the latest issue of the Daily Bugle this morning. Oh, yeah. Um, and then Connors opens the door, he's normal with his family, he looks happy as could be, uh, and then uh, JJ looks at uh, Brock and goes, do you want it cooked or raw? <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Uh, then we get um, Aunt May fans out the money like a boss. She's like a fucking G. She's like, oh shit, thousand dollars for me. What am I gonna spend this on next? Not my bills, because I don't give a shit. Yeah, it. Spend it on your bills, love. Like, come on. Yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna spend it on my bills. I'm going out shopping. I'm going back to the casino to gamble away all our savings. <laughs> ben Parker actually died because I was in so much debt that the sharks came for him and they took his life. <laughs> <laughs> they beat his legs with a bag of salami. <laughs> Your greatest villain, Peter, salami man. <laughs> um, so Aunt May gets mad at Peter for following Spider-Man to, into the sewers, but she got that money, son, so who gives a shit? Um, and then Peter narrates the end and implies that he and Spider-Man are stuck together forever. End of episode. So what, it's one of his first outings then, I guess. It is, yeah, but it was because Aunt May was like, why are you following Spider-Man into the sewers? That's so dangerous. And he's just like, well, Aunt May, you know, and makes an excuse. But then in his mind, he's just like, sorry, Aunt May, but me and Spider-Man, we're stuck together forever. And that's that. 
And that's that. So, final thoughts on the episode? Good? Well, I think it's interesting crap. that we, we uh, established that it's very similar to the opening to Batman the Animated Series. Uh, I, and again, I love the setups for future episodes. Uh, Kurt Connors slash the Lizard is not one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. So I've already established in the first last episode that I don't like many of the Spider-Man villains. There's only like a handful that I really, really enjoy, but they're all okay. But um, yeah, it's great. It's a great first episode. It is. It's a solid outing. Um, like I said, it had a lot to do, and I think it did it really well. It balanced it well. And it made me want... When I watched it again with you, it made me go... Next one, please. I want to watch the next one now. Um, which, of course, yes, we'll, it, that's true. Yeah, and which, of course, we'll get to reviewing at some point. Um, speaking of episodes, just to share with all our listeners, um, I've got lots of cool things and ideas coming, so it won't just be episode reviews. Obviously, we're going to do that. Um, that's the whole show. But we're going to do episodes on the music, uh, the reason it was banned in Hong Kong. Um what? The Toys and McDonald's line that was based on the series, uh, character designs, storylines from the comics that were then uh, developed for the cartoon and changed, or what was kept the same. Uh, Will, I want to do a series about your journey to becoming a Marvel artist, um, whether we do you know, a two-parter or a, a sort of Secret Wars <laughs> saga about it. Should I do could... the whole thing as, as Gilbert Lee as well? No, because we will have no <laughs> listeners at all. Um <laughs> but yeah, we'll do we'll do some sort of saga there, and I'm calling it your wall crawl to Marvel Comics. So there's another pun for you. Okay. Um, I would love to do some as we as we grow our fan base, um, and people reach out to us. It'd be great to do some fan interviews and what people thought of the show and why they loved it so much, the memories of the show when they were growing up. Um, it'd be great. Well, to if do anybody just writes into the email, which is what is it again? S T A S podcast at gmail dot com. We'll happily do shout-outs and things like that and answer questions. For sure. Oh, speaking of shout-outs, Charles Moses, who is the IT guy for me at work, without you, I would not be able to do this podcast. Uh, he set up everything, and he is a fucking legend. So thank you, Charles. Um, thank you, Charles. So going on, uh, I would love to do episodes um, you know, over the voice actors. Let's do some season reviews once we come to the close of a season. Favourite moments, least favourite crossovers. we got video games. Where Science Ends and Fiction Begins, Spidey's Rogues Gallery, uh, Spidey's Allies in the show, John Semper Jr., um, do an episode on him, Bob Richardson, the main producer, A.B. Arid, Stan Lee, The Sinister Six, which for this show isn't changed to The Insidious Six, as they're oh, really? Yeah, they felt Sinister Six sounded too sinister. Isn't that weird? That... <laughs> Um, no, never mind Insidious, I think if they saw that movie now, they'd be like, oh my god, change it back, change it back. <laughs> uh, we've also got Season 6, What Could Have Been, which I know you really want to know. Um, I think I'll do that one um, fairly soon, because there's lots of cool stuff that I want to talk about. Which... Well, no, you can wait on that one, because it'd be good to catch up with the whole show, so it'd be better to go in with a, you know, a fresh mind on things. All right, we'll see how we go. Um, and then sound effects and sound design of the show... Uh, oh, that'd be cool. Yep, definitely go over all of those. Uh, set design of New York City and the first time that CG was introduced into a cartoon at this level. Um, and talking about how CG was supposed to be featured a lot more, but was not uh, equipped enough. Well, there was that. The, the Spider-Man show after this was full CGI, wasn't it? On And it was on MTV as well. It was, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we've got... Uh, definitely want to do an episode on Spider-Man and Peter Parker, just in general, just the hero of the show. We'll talk about all our greatest favourite memories and moments of Spider-Man in this show and all the iterations that we encountered, not just from the show itself, but like the comics that spawned out the show, video games, etc. Um, I'd love to do one on James Cameron's cancelled Spider-Man film, and then finally what the film stole from the animated series as well. So lots of cool things to do. Uh, yeah, if we set up a YouTube, we could do some playthroughs of some old Spider-Man games. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be cool. I've got I've got a ton of old Spider-Man games. I've got all the equipment for it. Oh, yeah, let's definitely do that. And so, now we come to the part of the episode where we've got a few things, got a few jingles to go along with it, and you get to play little games, Will, and our listeners get to listen along as well. Really? Um, yeah, and if... 
we find it too hard of a decision, then we can always branch out to the listeners, listeners as well. So first of all, we're playing a little game called Villain vs. Villain. And the premise of this game is I have all the animated series villains listed. So there are in total 33 of them. I excluded some which were kind of lame, like um, Silvermane, which is basically an old grumpy man who wanted to be young and stuff like that. You know, he wouldn't really be a threat. But what we're going to do is you're going to pick two numbers between 1 and 33. That's Scott, my favourite number. Scotty Pittman. And um, we're going to have a discussion on who would win in a fight. Then the winner is going to go on to the next round. And we're going to keep on going through all these numbers. And finally, we're going to have a bunch of finalists. And eventually, we're going to come to a point where we're going to have six of them. And we're going to either have a insidious six, because we're sticking with the theme, brawl for the winner of all the villains. Uh -huh. Or we can continue into a final match where it's one-on-one -on -one for the title. Well, <laughs> if you wanted to go even further, you can download tons of characters in the WWE video games, we can actually make them wrestle each other to see who wins. Well, I'd rather discuss, because I think that then it's fun, because we know these characters. We can discuss, but I'd also like to do that as well. That well, funny. you can do that on your own time. Um, <laughs> eventually, eventually, there's going to be one where there's going to be three people, because obviously we have an odd number. Um, but let's just do two today. So, I'm going to play the Villains vs. Villains theme, and then we're going to kick off, and you're going to pick two numbers, alright? Yeah, sounds fun. All oh, right, we're doing villains versus villains. Okay, what's your first number from 1 to 33? 33. 33. Favourite number? 33 is the black cat. Okay. Okay. Second number? Uh, number one. The lizard. Ooh, topical. The lizard versus the black cat. Now, we've got in one corner the black cat, super soldier serum. Yeah, she's, she is Captain America. Running through her veins, um, amazing reflexes, super strength. Great uh, reflexes. Great reflexes. Uh, and also just all around badass, Black Cat mm -hmm. is. And then the lizard, which is a vicious, very strong creature with sharp teeth, sharp claws, big tail that can whip through concrete. We got a pretty good match here. Um... Well, I remember in the McFarlane comics, uh, Black Cat got absolutely beaten up by Venom. And I would definitely put Venom way above both of them in terms of strength. Agreed, yeah. I've never seen the Venom fight the lizards, but I would think he would absolutely destroy them as well. So yeah, it is a very even match. I'm going to vote for the Black Cat because I'm just not that big a fan of the lizard. No, no, you can't do that though. It has to be based... Why not? Because you can't just go, I like well, Black Cat, so she's going to win. It's got to be, I understand you like her, but it's got to be their abilities. I mean, she's also, besides having super strength and agility, she's very quiet on her feet. Um, she can sneak around a lot, so she could possibly sneak up on the lizard. And obviously with that skill, you can then use it to your advantage. Um, I feel like the lizard always loses, though, right? Like... He's, he's like I've never seen him like have the lizards never had his day. Well, they all like, they're all they're ah, all but they all lose, don't they? In a way, they're villains. That's why I don't. Yeah, have... well, I don't think they always do. Like some have mini battles where they always like they win and get away and stuff like that. I feel like the lizard, whatever he's doing, he's like this is my big elaborate plan. I'm turning people's toes into lizard mouths, and I'm gonna make people run around with lizard toes, and they, it's gonna be great. All right, well, let's set the stage, right? So. We're also not in the sewers in this fight. Let's say we're just out in the streets. So for Lizard, he's not going to be able to, like, scuttle around in the sewers and do his thing. You've got Black Cat. She could easily not obey the rules of censorship and punch that fucker in the face loads of times. Well, actually, do you know what? I think the Lizard would win. Do you? Because I'm thinking also Super Soldier Serum could withstand a lot of, like, the tail whip from the Lizard. It can, but think of how much... How many times Spider-Man's be been beaten to a pulp by the lizard? Like, not not many villains do beat Spider-Man to a pulp. Yeah, he does do that, like, sort of and berserker the, barrage, doesn't he? Yeah, Yeah, like, the classic McFarlane image of with his 
mask all ripped up that they used in the Tobey Maguire film. You know what I'm talking about? That classic image where his mouth's exposed and his, his eyes shattered? Yeah. That's after a match he had with the lizard. Now, the lizard was possessed in that match, but it was still the lizard. Okay. So, I think just because he has defeated Spider-Man in one-to-one combat, uh, and I, I think Bart Cat could outsmart Spider-Man, but I don't think you can outsmart a monster humanoid. So my vote's going to be for the lizard. All right. But well, I, think, I think we should let uh, audience members decide in the end. Okay. I mean, if we have enough by now, then maybe we, I mean, maybe it would just be one vote, which would be hilarious, but it could push it over <laughs> the edge. My, I mean, to be honest with you, my vote's for the lizard as well. So unless the listeners who are listening have... A different thing to say, I think that that is uh, the lizard, hands down. Got to be. It's a shame because I really like Black Cat. I like Black Cat way more than I like the lizard. I know, but it's just fighting ability. It's just going one on one. So I think the lizard takes it just because of the teeth, the claws, the scales, which are obviously impenetrable to a large amount of pain. He can grow back some limbs. Uh, he's he's a yeah, pretty, he's a high I, I contender. I think he definitely wins. Yeah, he's a big contender, so the lizard takes it. All right. Ding, so, ding, ding. so that's that. Now we're going to move on to another one, which I call Sensor Thwip. And <laughs> what? what's, what's the pun here? Well, instead of censorship? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to go through the episode we watched, and Sense. if they obeyed all of their censorships or Sensor Thwip. I'm going to play the theme now. There's this weird, like, gargling noise at the end. I don't know who it is, but it's funny. Bloody hell, that's a, that's a long theme. <laughs> Maybe I'll shorten it for next time. That's what I was yeah, I've been here all bloody day. Like anyway, <laughs> listen to the full soundtrack of Spider-Man: The Animated Series for our next game. <laughs> all right, so let's go through Sensor Thwip. We've got no punching. There were no punches thrown in this episode. Okay. Well, I mean, I feel like this game's kind of stupid because I don't think they can break any censorships, right? Well, you'll be surprised because they have, but not in oh, this, okay. not necessarily this episode. But it's still fun to go through. No use of the words "kill," "death," or "die." Uh, that is true. No one said "death," "die," or "kill." No shooting bullets. That's true. There weren't even any guns in this episode. Uh, no blood. That's true as well. No breaking glass. Coincidentally, every single window in bloody New York City is wide open for any villain or Spider-Man to swing through. And when we get to later episodes, there are some funny ones, man, where you're just like, that is ridiculous. Um, no use of the words radioactive or its variations. That's true. However, the theme tune itself is full of radioactive Spider-Man. Yeah, radioactive. Wow. Yep. <laughs> it's kind of like they're like, fuck you, censorship. Wow. Yep. Uh, Joe what Perry. You say spy. Yep, Joe Perry did not know that at the time when they were making that song with uh, the composers. Um, now, this is an interesting one. No children in peril. Would you say that Billy was ever in peril during this no, episode? I don't I think, think so either. I think he was traumatised, but not in peril. Yeah, well, Billy's at, <laughs> Billy's at Gilbert <laughs> Lee's house. Like, they're like, can we traumatise a child? They're like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Just don't put him in peril. That's totally okay. Yeah. Yep, totally. Uh, so no children in peril but traumatised, besides, obviously, all the snacks he's having at Gilbert Lee's house as he waits for his parents to sort their shit out. <laughs> it's like when, not that I know about this from experience, but from things I've seen, where parents are fighting and the kid, like, hangs out with the friendly neighbour while the parents fight it out. Yeah. Uh, it's really weird. Uh, and then finally, my favourite, No Harming Pigeons. Ah, uh, yeah. Pro-Pidge. Pro-Pidge. Spidey's Pro-Pidge. No pigeons were harmed in this episode. So that's Sensor Thwip. Uh, and then we're going on to the last section, which is going to be called the Daily Bugle Facts. And 
Since I have loads of facts on this show, and I do not want to go through all of them at once, there's going to be a few that I end up saying because it pertains to the episode. Like, for instance, I just said Radioactive is using the theme over and over again, but we were just talking about it there, so it doesn't matter. Um, but I have, for you, 65 facts here, Will. 65? Yeah. Oh, right, are you doing the same setup as uh, the other thing, then? Well, there's 65 episodes of this show, so I thought that was quite uh, a Okay, fun. I thought you were about to tell me 65 facts and then play another song that's about 30 seconds. No, like, no, 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 no. What we're going to do... This long enough. Yeah, no, what you're going to do is you're going to tell me a number between 1 and 65. I'm going to play the theme real quick, and then we're going to move on to it. Short enough for you? Yeah. All right, so Daily Bugle Facts. Pick a number, 1 through 65. 33. 33. Okay, I hope it's a good one. Some of them you're just like, eh, it's kind of all right. <laughs> uh, 33. Oh, it's a big one. Okay. Supervising producer Bob Richardson said that all of the show seasons, season five was the most problematic. The mistakes in those episodes, as well as the animation's poor quality and overtly repeated scenes for season 5, will result in a three-month delay in writing the season 5 scripts. When the scripts did finally arrive, most of which were written by John Semper, the season 5 stories were the most complex scripts the Spider-Man animated series ever had. Richardson said the season 5 scripts went against everything we were trying to do in an effort to keep the workload on all of the production at a reasonable level due to the new characters, locations, and guest hero and villain's powers included. Semper wrote most of the stories in Season 5 himself due to several writers, including Brooks Wachtel and Stan Berkowitz, leaving the series during the three-month delay for Season 5. Well, it was a dope season, though. It so. was a dope season, I know, and it's funny I when you see was... how much controversy behind the scenes for this show. I mean, obviously there's a lot that went on between Semper and Narad over the feud with who like who wants to sell more toys over who wants to tell a better story. But yeah, yeah there's a lot, man. There's I mean we've I've got a few others in, in the Daily Bugle facts that we'll eventually get to that are like, wow, there was a lot going on behind the scenes that we didn't know, but they, they managed to hit it out of the park every time as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, definitely. So that's fun, that's like an advent calendar. It is, exactly. So I thought instead of, because last episode there was no sort of order to the chaos of listing facts, and I thought, I, I don't want to let them all off at once. I figured one one an episode is good, we can discuss it. I mean, season five, as you said, is a great season. You've got the Spider-Verse, uh, you've got Madam Web, you've got all the different characters. Yeah, and, and they set it up to be like a penultimate season six. They did. Um, and actually, that reminds me, and it's not in my web of facts. Um, <laughs> web of facts, maybe I'll change it. Uh, but, um, you know how I told you that Madam Web is... Fact, say, fact fluids or something, I don't know. <laughs> fact fluids. Mind you let the naming to me, bud. Um, so, you know how... Uh, fact cartridges, there we go. <laughs> so, you know how I told you last episode that Madam Web was based off of Joan Lee? Well, it not only was based off of Joan Lee, but Joan Lee did the voice of Madam Web as well. No way! I love her voice as well. That is Joan Lee doing the voice of Madam Web. When I created the character, I said the only voice that can be done is Joanie's voice. So I got her in the studio, and you know what? We share our money, so I got to get a bit of a cut of it as well, and we had a great life. <laughs> Uh, um, it wouldn't be an episode without Gilbert Lee, but yeah, uh, that was that. And also for our listeners, there was some uh, audio that I had to cut last episode due to poor recording quality. But I mentioned Jim Cummings, who uh, played the chameleon on the show, but most importantly, which was cut out, plays the shocker. Um, and I was mentioning some of other uh, roles that he had played in voice acting, and one of the ones that unfortunately got cut, which I love, it was Darkwing Duck, so Jim Cummings was also Darkwing Duck. So, so I think that about wraps it up uh, for this week. Do you have anything that you want to share before we head off? 
I've I've inked Michelangelo for this cover, so that's great. All right, cool. Good time spent. Good time spent. My back hurts because I've been standing up doing this. (laughs) All right, well, um, join us next time where we'll continue talking all things Spider-Man, the animated series. Until then, I've been Alex Robson. And I'm Will Robson. And remember, with a great podcast comes great recordability. Goodbye. (laughs) Ha <laughs> ha